This is so great to see you all. I don't know if you all can see what I see, but I'm watching like the number of participants just going up, up, up every second, which is pretty darn cool. And folks, if you are having trouble with your video, I want you to go ahead and remember that you can always turn on your audio only. So you can call in to the number that was in your email and put in your participant ID, and you can always listen to the audio of what's happening there. So even if you can't get the video or if you're having glitches, please try the audio. You can always have that in the background so uh, we can be connected to one another. I'm seeing so many people. Folks, Oh, this is great. <laughs> Love Trump's technology. Oh, so Luke true. Lost. <laughs> well, wait a minute. Justin, Justin. Schroeder. What? <laughs> Justin, what are you doing here? Oh my gosh. All the way from New Justin, Zealand. Look at that. Oh. I love this. I knew we'd be all together today. Oh, Justin. Hi. Mary. I'm glad you're here. Oh. Yeah. This is so good. And thanks, you guys, for keeping on trying. My heart is filling up. Getting to see your names pop up and see we really need to get to be together. So if you haven't done it already, let me suggest that you open up your chat box on the bottom of your screen. You can open that box up and keep it open during worship. So that's a way that you can interact with one another. Uh, and you can let us know that you're here by typing a greeting in on that chat box. And also, it means you get to see everybody. Uh, kind of posts coming in and that is really, really fun. So uh, open up your chat box if you have that available to you. And also just so you know, in case you're home worried if your hair is looking right or if you're sitting there in your pajamas, we have automatically <laughs> turned off your video and, uh, and your ability to interact audio with us so that uh, you can be there in whatever form you are in whatever way that you're coming to worship this morning. And I also just want to say when you join us for smaller gatherings later on today or later on this week, uh, the Zoom experience you have will be different. So the worship Zoom experience you're having now is just me, but with the chat box open for you all. But when you get into the smaller gatherings online later today or in the week ahead, you'll be able to see one another, to turn on your cameras, to interact with each other. So it'll be a much more intimate experience that way and a chance to kind of go back and forth with one another. So just trust that uh, worship Zoom is one kind of experience and small group gathering Zoom is another. And we will work to stay as connected as possible with each other in all of these new ways. So just like for the folks who joined us, on uh, Friday night for our Facebook Live event. We had people show up from all over the world. So that is happening again today. So even though we aren't able to be together in person in our usual way in the church sanctuary physically together, there's something I think that's pretty, pretty amazing about this experience where we are really connected all over the world. And we even get to have Justin here. <laughs> so, I know there's not a lot that's feeling good about this situation right now, but I'm grateful for this level of connection. And I'm also feeling really grateful for the level of creativity and adaptation that you all are showing. And I wanna give a shout out to our volunteer team here at church who has pulled together online worship in you know two days, something that we've thought would take quite a lot longer to figure out. But a big thank you to our volunteer team to Jordan Wood and David Lepic and Jeff Sylvester and to our staff, especially to Jen Stromberg, our communications and office manager, who have been working so hard to get this going, to our program team, to Arif Mamdani and Ruth McKenzie and Lauren Wyeth, to Seth for being with us today, Emma who will be online with us later, uh, leading stuff. We are all pulling together to make this happen for each other because it matters to be connected. It matters so much to be here with all of you. So we're building our resilience. You're gonna hear me saying that all the time as we lean into being creative and adaptive and cherishing being together and connecting over perfection because perfection, not gonna happen right now. <laughs> and that is just fine. We are going for good enough and good enough and most important is being together. So I just saw one message scroll by that says we are all in our pajamas. I'm loving that idea. Maybe we'll end up liking this. <laughs> Maybe not having to look good, <laughs> put on our Sunday clothes might feel pretty good. Church in pajamas. So this is so good. Can you guys see how many people are on? 242 right now. 243. 
Oh, look, there it is. I can see it now too, 249. <laughs> you guys, we keep growing. I love this. <laughs> Maybe we should all come to church in pajamas the first day we're back. I like that suggestion. <laughs> I like it a lot. I was teasing with some of my other minister friends that we should all at least wear our pajama bottoms. But, you know, I'm wearing real pants just so that, you know, dress pants, dress shoes, whole situation. <laughs> but who knows, maybe when we come back, we'll do pajamas all around. So it is so good to be in community with you all this morning, to be here together. So you probably already know we're gathering online together today because things are changing so quickly in our physical environment and in our world. Things are changing fast and new information is coming kind of this way and that, and it's important for us to be together. It's important for us to remember who we are and what we are about, and we are the people of love and hope. We are First Universalists. We are the people of love and hope who welcome, affirm, and protect the light in each human heart. We are the people who listen deeply to where love is calling us next, no matter what is happening around us. We are the people who cultivate bravery and humility and compassion and service to justice. We are the people who are deeply committed to racial justice. This is who we are and this is what we are about all the time, wherever we are. So today we are creating space to be together, to remember what's most important for us and who we are. And we're gonna do that today, not just in this Zoom room worship experience, but later on today in some smaller online gatherings as well, and then later on this week. So if you haven't been, I really suggest you start checking your email inbox regularly, check our church website, Facebook page, just to keep up to date with what's going on and how to stay connected during this time when so much is changing. So just for some examples of other ways that you can connect today, after worship, join us for social hour with Arif Mamdani. I'm gonna encourage you to bring your own cup to coffee hour today. I've got mine. Then for those of you who are in ninth to 12th grade, I wanna encourage you to join us for virtual youth group today at 11 a.m. That'll be led by Emma Paskowitz and Reverend Ruth. Then a little later on at 12.30, Seth Matz, our program coordinator for young families and our young kids will be leading story time for uh, families with babies through first graders. Again, that's at 12.30 today. Uh, then you can also, if you are black, indigenous, or a person of color, join our BIPOC group today. This is for folks age 16 and up who identify as black, person of color, or indigenous. This smaller gathering will be led by Brianna French and Michael Dotson. Thanks so much for volunteering your time to lead that. Then later on this week, other opportunities are coming too. Lauren Wyeth, our Director of Children, Youth, and Family Ministries, will be leading a gathering for grown-ups. This is for parents of kindergartners through sixth graders, and that's coming up on Tuesday at 7 o'clock. Then I think we're all going to need this calming circle. <laughs> the calming circle led by Reverend Ruth McKenzie coming up on Wednesday at 7 o'clock. There'll be other opportunities coming your way too for families with different age kids, for parents, for elders, for adults. So keep an eye, like I said, on your email, on your inbox, on our uh, webpage for all the ways that we can connect with one another. We also wanna know who you are and how you're doing and how you might be able to help if you have help to share right now. So you've probably seen in your inbox already, this survey we've asked you to fill out that lets you, us know about your needs and what resources you have to share. So I want you to remember church is always about taking turns. It's always about tapping in and out, about resting and refueling and letting ourselves be cared for when we need to, and then about jumping in and helping when we're able and sharing what we have to ensure that our whole community gets cared for. So let's make sure you fill out that survey, let us know who you are, how you're doing, what you need, and how you might be able to help. And we know this might change, so fill it out again as your needs change, as your resources change. So if you haven't been receiving emails from us, please let us know, we wanna stay connected. And I hope you are feeling this as our regular routine, welcome and announcements time. Announcements are almost done. <laughs> so friends, whoever you are, whatever you're carrying, whatever is heavy on your heart, whatever is lifting you up today, you are welcome here with all of who you are, with all of what you carry. Our time together is made sacred by our presence, by our breath. 
welcome. So for those of you who've been online with me already this week, this is gonna feel familiar and I want it to get good and practiced for you. So let's start with a quick spiritual grounding technique. I want you to make yourself comfortable in your body, wherever you are. For me, that's feet on the floor, back straight, shoulders lifted up and drop down. And it's a deep breath in, full on the inhale, super slow on the exhale. We're gonna do this two more times. Deep breath in, super slow breath out. One more time on your own time. Breathe all the way into your belly, your chest, your head. Breathe all the way out, all the way out to your toes. When we can settle our bodies, it settles our minds, our bodies, our spirits. It allows us to remember who we are and what's most important. So we're going to start our worship in our usual way, which is to light our chalice together. So we're lucky to have a couple of chalice lighters with us today. They happen to be people from my family. So Henry and Kate Mitchell Crow, come on up. This is a time for you all at home. If you have a chalice at home, please gather it up. If you have a candle or if you're just bringing this into your mind's eye, go ahead and do that. And go ahead and light your candle. We're creating this sacred space together. Yep, go ahead, Kate, and you can light our candle here. And Henry, would you lead us in our chalice lighting words? If you know them, let's say them together. Love is the spirit of this church. And service is its law. This is our great covenant to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in love, and to help one another. Nice job, you guys. Thanks for your help. So now we're going to move over to Lauren Wyeth, our Director of Children, Youth, and Family Ministries for a story for all ages. Hey, y'all. It's good to be here together. I My heart is filled with the, in a new way, filled in a new way than it has been in a long time. So I want to talk with you this morning about prayer. And there's lots of different ways to pray. And I'm going to share with you one prayer that I made up. You can make up your own prayers. Um, my idea of prayer is that it is a time for me to really pay attention. Prayer is a time for me to really pay attention to what's going on around me and what's going on inside of me, to pay attention to those things with love in this particular kind of way where I'm just like not judging myself or what's going on. I'm just paying attention and listening. So um, I moved to Minnesota about eight and a half years ago. And shortly after I moved here, I learned that I knew nothing about the magic of winter. I lived near Powderhorn Lake and I just found winter to be so amazing that every morning when I got up, I would immediately go out and go for a walk on that path that goes around Powderhorn Lake. I bet you've probably been to Powderhorn Park at some point yourself. If you haven't, ah, you need to go because it is such a beautiful place. The lake is nestled down, kind of down these slopes, and in the winter they're covered in snow, and the ice is this frozen, slippery, solid sheet. And the sky on many Minnesota days is this wide open blue. So I would go walking around the lake. Sometimes I'd hear the, the Canada geese um, kind of honking as they flew over, and I would just feel so connected, so connected to the world. I knew in those moments that I was part of the world, and it made me feel so good. It helped me keep everything in perspective. Well, as spring came, my first spring in Minnesota, those little green shoots coming up were so welcome and surprising, but the most surprising thing of all happened one, 
one winter, well, one winter spring day, kind of like today, where I went for my morning walk and seemingly overnight, there were half a dozen families of geese swimming on the melted lake. And if you've ever seen Powderhorn Lake at the time when the geese hatch and the ducklings hatch, there are so many. It is so remarkable how many there are. They're everywhere and they are ridiculously adorable. Those baby geese, they're like really small and they're super fuzzy and they have these little leathery beaks and feet. And when I saw them, I'm gonna admit to you that what I wanted to do was run over and pick one up and snuggle it. Well, if you live in Minnesota, you know that this is not popular with the baby geese and it is even less popular with their grownups. So whenever I would try to get close to a baby goose, it would waddle quickly to the lake, hop in and swim away. And one or two adults would waddle toward me quickly, hissing, and they are very, very frightening. So I learned quickly that I was going to need to figure out another way to appreciate these little things that I could not touch. So what I... What I developed as my prayer, my way of letting in the beauty and the mm, deliciousness of little baby geese was to make my hand in this shape like a fist, which by the way is about the size of a baby goose, and then to take my other hand and to stroke it. Sometimes I close my eyes and I do this for my prayer and I think about all the beautiful things in the world. I think about all the new life. I think about spring always coming, no matter what. I think about how I can depend on those cycles of nature. They always happen, no matter what's happening in my life, no matter what people are doing. The earth keeps turning, the seasons keep changing, and the baby geese, they will come. On days when I'm having a hard time going and being in nature and remembering all those good things that are part of it is really good for my spirit. And this prayer is particularly helpful. So feel free to borrow it or make up your own. Mm -hmm. Seth's going to teach you, teach us, another spiritual practice that's really perfect for this time. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Seth. Hello, my friends. It's so good to be together with all of you. You know, there's a very certain spiritual practice that I think we're all practicing a lot right now, and that is washing our hands. And I want to talk a little bit about washing our hands. Some of you, when you were in the building, may have noticed these posted around. There's a few special UU hymns that have been adapted a little bit to be about hand washing. And I want to sing one of them with you today. But I want us to do it all together and practice how we wash our hands together too. So I think you might do your own hand washing a little bit differently at home, but for this, we're going to do it this way. We're going to wash our hands one, Two, three, four. Does that make sense? Let's do it all together again. One, two, three, four. And we're gonna sing a special version of Come Sing a Song With Me. And I think Lauren's gonna write the lyrics in the comments on the chat so that you can all do it at home too. It goes like this. Come wash your hands with me. Come wash your hands with me. Come wash your hands with me that we might have peace of mind. And I'll bring you soap when soap is hard to find. And I'll sing this song with you as we help protect humankind. Thank you, dear ones. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lauren and Seth. It feels good to be together protecting humankind <laughs> with all that we can do. 
So let me invite you to join me in the spirit of prayer and meditation now. So go ahead and settle your bodies. Feel comfortable in your body any way that works for you. This might be feet on the floor. It might be hands in your lap. Might be shoulders rolled up and dropped down. Might be just feeling the support of your chair or the earth underneath you to go ahead and let your breathing slow down, your breathing get a little bit deeper. Perhaps you can practice that deep, full inhale and that super slow exhale as we settle in for a moment of silence together. spirit of life and love. So many of us are confused and scared right now. So much is changing so quickly. The things that we are used to depending on, being able to come together physically, maybe it's school or work, maybe it's our income, our savings, our routines, everything is up in the air. We are worried about what will happen next. We are worried about what is happening now. So much is changing. In this time of so much change, help us remember what we know for sure, that we are all connected, that we are always all connected. We always have been and always will be. Help us remember that we are loved, that we are whole and holy and worthy, each one of us valuable and important, that we are part of a faith that draws the circle wide, that always has and always will, that we and this whole world are held by a love so big that it will not let any one of us go. We are held in love. We hold one another in love even when we cannot touch with our hands. We rely on our hearts, always connected. And here in this community, we share our worries, our fears, our sorrows, and our joys with one another as the cycle of life turns for us all, as it always does. So friends, we're gonna do this a little differently today, our cycle of life sharing with each other. If you're with us on video, and you've got your chat box open. In just a moment, I'll invite you to type in to share any sorrows that you're having. And then in a few moments after we've had a chance to share our sorrows or our worries with one another, I'll invite us to shift, to share our joys, the things that are bringing us hope together. Now, if you're joining us via audio or if this uh, chat box thing is not working or not the right thing for you, I invite you to take this time as we share to try again that deep breathing technique that I taught you. Maybe, maybe to try Lauren's prayer, to remember the ways that we are connected. Maybe Seth's prayer. <laughs> so to go ahead and let yourself center in, and let's begin by sharing the things that are heavy on our hearts with one another. Any sorrows that you have, feel free to share them over in the chat box. And if you cannot or do not wish to share that way, to settle yourself into a time of meditation and prayer. I see you. So many things on our hearts now. So many things we're all holding. I 
there are the things that are specific to this national and global moment that we're in. And still, right, the regular cycle of life keeps turning for all of us with our grief, illnesses, losses, things that we worry about. I hope as you're typing, you are feeling our hearts reach out to each and every one of you. I'm holding you in my heart. I'm seeing so many of you and so many of you coming in from really all over, all over the country, all over the world. We're missing so much, aren't we? I don't know if you've seen on there, if you're on the chat, one of the ways to send a virtual hug to one another with parentheses. <laughs> yes, I am sending that virtual hug to all of you right now too. So it is important, even as we hold so much pain and sorrow and worry, to also see and pay attention to the joy and the wonder in our lives, to know the wholeness that is being alive. So I'm going to encourage us to move into a time of sharing some joys with one another. So again, if you are online with video and you want to type into that chat box something that is bringing you some joy right now. What are you noticing? What are you grateful for? Let's gather those up together too. We hold so much together. This is all of what life is, right? All of it. I see one of you grateful for learning Zoom. I'm grateful for that too. <laughs> oh. Yes, 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 look at this. <laughs> time to focus on my spiritual practice you know i love that people <laughs> we need it right now don't we remembering what matters most so I want to encourage you to keep on looking for the joy, to look for the things that give you hope, that make you feel grateful, to keep up that practice all day, every day, because it's going to sustain us and help to hold us. So when you're ready, I'm going to invite us to take that deep breath together again. So that full, deep breath in. Super slow, exhale out. For all of who we are and all of what we carry, we are grateful to carry it together. May the grip of addiction be loosened. May the weight of oppression be lightened. May grief be shared. May joy break through. 
and may love make every suffering bearable for us all. May it be so, and amen. Thank you for that. We're learning. We're learning to be together, to pray together, to hold this space together. So I just want to tell you a little story together. So this past week, I was chatting with a friend online, Meg Riley. Many of you know her. She was in our pulpit not that long ago with Kate Tucker. And she suggested to me that maybe because my family and I had been through a pretty major house fire not that long ago, that we might have had some experience with living with uncertainty. Yep, we have some experience with that. <laughs> maybe she said we would have something to share about what we do and what we can do that helps when all of a sudden the ground beneath our feet shifts suddenly. And here's the thing, this has happened for all of us. Maybe it hasn't been as dramatic or visible to the outside world as a house fire, but we have all been through those moments when the ground beneath our feet, when the things we thought were really sure suddenly shake and sometimes even disappear. Things change in our lives, sometimes with a moment's notice and somehow we survive. So one of the ways that we build resilience as individuals and as a community is to remember. To remember that we've done hard things before and to remember what has helped. So I hope you can spend some time thinking about what has helped you in the past. In those moments when everything changed, what did you do that helped you and those around you? So here are a few of the things that I'm remembering from those times right after our fire. So in the early days, right after our house fire, I noticed right away that everyone in our family was being super gentle with each other. Somehow we dropped all of the things that used to occupy our brain space, our time, our minds, the things that mattered so much the day before didn't matter anymore. What did matter was being kind to one another, was making room for each other. Each of us stressed out and scared and worried in our own way, each of us trying to make an adventure out of it in the moments that we could, we made room for one another. So whether it was breakfast or bedtime, if somebody needed to just burst out in tears or in laughter, that's what we did. We stopped everything and made room for one another. And we were so loving and gentle. I remember even as it was happening that I was thinking to myself, can we keep this? I don't wanna keep having house fires, but I want this. <laughs> I want this way of being together, so kind and gentle, making so much room for one another. I've been remembering that and thinking how we can extend that gentleness and care to each other, all of each other, in this super scary time. I've also been remembering, and the people who work here at church on staff who are here during that time can testify to this very true thing, that for days and weeks and well, months and still sometimes, I wore the same t-shirt every day. Now the t-shirt was under my clothes and yes, I did wear it on Sundays under my suits. <laughs> so if you're wondering, it was there. And it was my uh, Disney Mickey Mouse shirt. And the reason this shirt was so important is because it was the shirt I walked out of the house wearing that night. And when I lost just about everything else, it mattered so much to have something familiar and comforting and comfortable with me. Now, I didn't realize it till later, but my son was doing the same thing. He was doing it with his shoes. <laughs> so see these cute little shoes? Super holy, my friends. <laughs> holy, holy is what I'd say. So he wouldn't let us get him a new pair of shoes. <laughs> he wore those shoes, the ones that he wore out of the house every day for the longest time even as his feet were growing, even as they were getting way too small, we each needed something to hold on to, something familiar. So friends, I have a teacher who has taught me that sometimes you can't take the pain away. You can't stop being in the discomfort. But what you can do is make yourself a little more comfortable while you're going through it. So I am thinking a lot about how we can make ourselves a little more comfortable in this uncomfortable time, and how we can bring that sense of comfort to each other. How can you do that? How can you bring a little more comfort into your life? 
how can you share a little more comfort with each other in this uncomfortable time? So in this time of so much change, let's remember to be gentle with one another. Let's remember to be less judgmental and more gentle with one another. Let's remember to find comfort where we can, to offer it to each other. And let's remember what has always been true and what will always be true, that we are deeply connected to one another, whether we're together physically or not, that we are loved, whole and holy and worthy, each one of us a part of this larger love, this larger community that will not let us go. This is who we are. This is what matters right now. Gentleness, comfort, connection. Let's do this for ourselves and for each other. So friends, when we gather in person and when we gather online, one of the ways that we hold each other in this larger web of love that we are a part of is to share what we can with each other and also to receive what we can from each other. So we've created an emergency response fund in this moment. Uh, we're gonna take an offering in just a moment for those of you who have financial resources to share right now. If there are financial resources that you need, please let us know. So this emergency fund that we are setting up will go towards replenishing and filling up our minister's emergency fund, which helps individuals and families who have immediate financial needs during this time. This emergency fund will help us to purchase the new equipment we need so that we can keep on connecting with each other. And we will also be finding ways to support our larger community. So friends, there are ways that you can give to the church right now to this special emergency fund. Maybe the easiest way for those of you who are comfortable with this is our text to give option. So you do this by texting first you NIV, that's F-I-R-S-T-U-N-I-V to 73256. If you do this, you'll receive a link to a secure form to enter your information and you can give that way to this emergency fund. You can also go to our website and select the giving at the top on the menu, then go over to offering plate and scroll all the way down. There are a number of different options for how to give. Maybe you're on Square Cash, maybe you want a text to give, maybe you wanna call into the church later on this week. This is a great opportunity for those of us who have financial resources to share, to share them so we can help support each other and our whole community during this difficult time. Thanks everybody for joining in in the ways that you can. Your generosity is important in this moment. So I wanna remind you too of the ways that we can be connected with one another during this time. So even though we're not in person, we are still here for you. Your ministers and staff are answering phones and emails. We're connecting via FaceTime and Zoom. We are here for each other. If there is something you need, please let us know. Fill out that survey that we've sent to you over email. Let us know who you are, how you're doing, what kind of help you might need, and how you might be able to help each other. We want to stay connected during this time. So we'll also continue to have worship services just like this on Sunday mornings. Well, maybe different. Maybe we'll learn a few things. I bet we will. So we'll continue to be together on Sunday mornings. There'll also be other opportunities for smaller gatherings throughout the week. So let me remind you again that we have social hour on Zoom with Arif Mamdani right after worship is done this morning. Like I said, bring your own cup. Grab your coffee. Working on our environmental stewardship, my friends. Also, we'll have virtual youth group at 11 o'clock for 9th to 12th graders with Emma Paskowitz and Reverend Ruth. We've got Sunday story time with Seth, which is going to be amazing at 1230 today for families with babies through first graders. We have our BIPOC group for Black people of color and Indigenous folks that's going to be meeting today at one o'clock. Uh, this is for folks 16 and up and will be led by Brianna French and Michael Dotson. And then we've got other events later on this week, gathering for grown-ups, uh, which will be happening on Tuesday at seven with Lauren uh, for parents with kids kindergarten through sixth grade and our calming circle on Wednesday evening with Reverend Ruth at seven o'clock. There'll be other opportunities coming your way too. Keep an eye out, stay connected. 
through your email, our church website. And if you're not receiving emails from us, please let us know. We want to be in touch with you. It is so good to be together this morning. So good to find ways to stay connected to each other, even when we can't be physically close. It matters tremendously. So I'm going to move us into our usual way of closing. So I invite you, if you want to, to hold out your hands, to know yourself connected to this community of care. I ask you to remember to be gentle with yourself and each other, to make yourself and others comfortable any way that you can in this time of discomfort. And to remember what is always true, my friends, that you are loved, whole and holy and worthy, each and every one of us, each of us connected, each of us important. May our love be with you today and in the days ahead. Amen. Well, those of you who've been with me in small groups know that my greatest fear as I said in seminary all the time, was that I was gonna to have to sing solo in front of a large group. I almost decided not to come and be a minister because of this very thing. So here we are. Anybody wanna come in the circle with me? <laughs> We're gonna sing Go Now in Peace. Anybody who's willing. Here we go, friends. Go now in peace, go now in peace. May the spirit of love surround you everywhere, everywhere you may go. Thank you. Oh, here comes Lauren, <laughs> running down from upstairs. So friends, we're gonna extinguish our chalice here, but you know this light continues in our hearts always. So I invite you in the chat box if you want, to go ahead and type in, I carry the flame as you sign off as well. It's been so very good to be together. <laughs>